Hey YouTube, how's it going? In this video I'm going to be introducing you to a compositing software that's relatively unknown, especially amongst the indie community as far as I'm aware, and it's called Natron. Natron is an open source software that is based on the industry standard compositing software which is Nuke. Um, the most popular software among the indie community at the moment would definitely be After Effects. Now, After Effects and Nuke are very different in that uh, After Effects is layer-based and Nuke is node-based, and Natron is node-based as well. So the huge benefit of learning how to use Natron is your skills will directly translate to the industry standard compositing software of today. Uh, so there's two main benefits to Natron, which is why I'm bothering to talk about it. One is the node base that I just mentioned, and the other one is that it's free. It's completely and utterly free. No free version or trial version or 30 days free and then you pay for it. It is open source, which means it is completely and utterly free to use. The big drawback with the software is its stability issues. It's got quite a lot of bugs, it crashes often, and uh, it's just kind of a bit frustrating in that sense. But because it's free, it's still worth a shot. Um, and if your computer is capable, it kind of helps a lot as well. So on my laptop it doesn't really run very well at all, but on my desktop it works pretty well. As I said, it's based on the industry standard software Nuke, so I'm going to show you what Natron looks like right here. So this is it, and this is Nuke. Natron, Nuke, Natron, Nuke. So it's basically identical, right? So this isn't going to be a how to use the software type of tutorial. Uh, but I will just briefly run over the very basics of node-based compositing uh, versus layer-based. So this is the layout of Natron, right? So you've got your viewer up here. If you have an image, this is where it will be displayed. This, the node graph here, this area, is essentially uh, like your layers uh, and your timeline in After Effects. And this here is where your effects settings uh, are tweaked. So to, the easiest way to explain is I'll bring in a clip. So so I'll just take this clip here and drag it and drop it into the node graph. You can drag and drop, or if you're in the node graph and you hit R on the keyboard, it'll bring up a file browser that you can navigate to your clips to. So if I, with the node selected, so what, firstly, it's brought in this node, okay? So this node is essentially my footage layer. And uh, if I select it and hit one, the viewer will connect to it. So this is the viewer, and this is what represents what is seen up here. And so because it's connected to this uh, node or layer, we can see the footage uh, in the viewer. And it's also opened up this uh, properties bin here. And this node is essentially a container uh, for a bunch of settings which will be stored here. And this is not dissimilar to just a layer in uh, After Effects. So there is no project bin in Natron where you would store all of your elements. The node graph acts as a project bin itself, so all the elements are stored inside the node graph. So if I wanted to have a bunch of clips in my project, like I can bring in all of these, and I just store them in the node graph, just like this. So this is my properties and this is my, t uh, my project, essentially. And if you want to see the timeline, you have the timeline here in the viewer, well, there's also this thing called the dope sheet, which is uh, just a different way of visualizing this sort of thing. And so these are our clips that we brought in here, these ones here. So if I delete these, we'll only have one in the no graph, which is read two, this one here. So if I want to make effects, uh, put effects on this, let's say a blur node, I can hit B on the keyboard, uh, which will bring up a blur properties. And so I can add some blur to the shot. There we go. And now let's say you want to add something that doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. If you hit tab, it'll bring up this menu here that you can type in. So let's say I want to add a grade node. I can make one like that. There's also a shortcut G for grade node as well. But so now I can open up the grade node in the properties and I have all these settings associated with the grade node. So I can uh, gamma it down, expose it up or down, whatever you want to do. Maybe let's say I want to had some saturation, same deal. So now we have like the beginnings of a really crap comp going on. Uh, so you can see here the blur node has introduced this kind of dark edge. So I can now go into the blur node that lives here and I can find the settings that relate to that. So in this case, it's border conditions black. We want to set it to nearest and it will just fix that edge all the way around. I can hit F in the viewer to fit the thing. Space bar will full screen the pane that the mouse is over. So I can do that with any of these sections. Even, oh, maybe not this one. Just like that. 
So that's the real basics. If I wanted to um, combine two clips, this took me kind of a while to figure out actually. So let's say I want to add a section of this clip. Oh yeah, so these are um, movie files, which is why Natron's not liking it. Um, ideally, compositing software should run with image sequences, like a JPEG, EXR, or PNG sequence. Um, but it's fine, we'll just ignore that for now. So if I want to uh, take this bird and put it in the shot, I can make a roto node, I hit O for roto, and I can draw a shape around the bird, just roughly like that. I'm using the middle mouse click and drag to move the view around like this. And enter to close the node. So the way Natron works best is essentially an upside down layer based um, composite. So in After Effects you'll have your background on the bottom and then your foreground layer on top and more foreground layers on top and top and top. Natron is the exact same but it works best upside down. So your background goes at the top and then below it you put a merge node and your foreground layer over top. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have my background image here, this one, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to get rid of this stuff here, and then I'm going to put a merge node underneath it and I'm going to put this over the top like that. And now we're going to get this because it's two full screen images over the top. So I'm going to just make sure we only get the bird I'm going to go, it was actually this frame with our bird. I'm just going to put a frame hold under here. And you can see the beginnings of, of the comp coming along. So we're at frame 78. I'm going to go into the frame hold, 78. And that's going to make the entire timeline of from this point on in the, in the node graph, frame 78. And so now I've got that. I'm going to make another merge node. And I'm going to make this the B, A, and I'm going to use a merge operation different to over because what it's done now is it's taken the roto node which is essentially black and put it over the image so we just have that which is not what we want so we want to go operation and mask which would take just what's inside the alpha of this roto image and so I can change this to be red green and blue so we can see the mat in all channels but essentially mask is going to take the B input multiplied by the alpha of input A. So now I have our bird image here, but if I check the alpha channel, we've got nothing in it. So if I over it uh, with the background on frame one, it's still gonna look weird like this, and that's because we're merging two images over the top of each other that have a black alpha channel. So I'm gonna give this section of the comp here uh, the correct alpha from this node. So I'm gonna use a shuffle node, which has two inputs, Again, we want to connect the B input to our B pipe, this one here, and our A input to the rotor, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, so this is A pipe, as in this pipe here, color from alpha. Right. And now if we view the image, so we connect the viewer here by selecting this and hitting one, or over here and we press A, we can see that we now have an alpha for this image. So now when we merge this over here, we get the bird composited over top of our image like that. And you can see this is the bugginess I'm talking about with Natron. It's not like it's not rendering the image uh, quite properly. I can force it to redraw the frame by clicking this here and it most of the time will fix it. And so now if I disable this node, I select it and I can hit D to toggle its disable. You can see what it's doing here. It's giving the image an alpha channel which will make it merge correctly. And so now we have a bird composited over the image. I can full screen it, refresh the viewer again. And we did our first comp in Natron. And so you can expand the node graph exponentially and zoom out and out and out. And you can see just how much space you have uh, to draw these comps. And it allows you to treat every single element very separately and very um, simply. So it's a very easy way to work once you understand how the node graph works and I highly recommend if you're a compositor or just uh, learning compositing that you learn node based compositing because it is a lot simpler and it is the industry standard way of compositing at the moment. So this is Natron, a very basic rundown of it. Um, 
I highly recommend you check it out, especially if it's free and you just need to do really basic composites. Maybe you're an editor and you just need some really simple things done here and there. Natron is a really good uh, option because you don't have to pay for it. If stability is a big deal for you, which it probably should be, um, take it with a grain of salt. It is free, so it doesn't hurt to try, but uh, I just thought I'd make a video about it because it is quite an interesting software. A couple of other things to note about it. Um, it's only 2D, there's absolutely no 3D capabilities in Natron, and because it's not widely known, there's not a whole lot of plugins for it. There are some, I've seen some here and there, but not, a, not as many as, say, for After Effects on Nuke. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you try Natron and enjoy it, please feel free to let me know. Also, if you try it and have any questions about Natron, feel free to ask those in the comment section below as well, and I'll do my best to answer those. But that just about does it for the video today, guys, so I hope you enjoyed. Um, take care, and I'll see you later.